Hey guys, today I'm going to be reviewing Now and Forever by Suzanne Colasanti. So I am just going to read the Goodreads description off of my phone. Normally I'd come up with my own description, but uh, I felt like this one was probably the best. I wouldn't have been able to come up with a short enough description type thing, so I'm just going to quickly read it. What if your boyfriend was the world's biggest rock star? Sterling is crazy in love with Ethan. Not only is he the sweetest boy she's ever met, but he's also an incredibly talented guitarist singer and songwriter. And since forever, he's believed he has what it takes to be a star. When Ethan becomes an overnight sensation, this sounds like Justin Bieber. When Ethan becomes an overnight sensation, he is thrown headfirst into the glam world of celebrity and so is Sterling. Before she knows it, she's attending red carpet premieres, getting free designer clothes, and flying around the country to attend Ethan's monumental sold out concerts. It's a dream come true, but whose dream is Sterling living? And what do you do when forever comes to an end? I originally started this book back in September of 2014, I believe, and I didn't finish it back then, I DNF'd it. I put it back on my TBR shelf because it was putting me in a reading slump and I just wasn't ready to jump back into another Suzanne Colasanti book. I had read All I Need in like August I think and it wasn't really living up to my expectations I had for it so I didn't have very big expectations going into this one for the second time. That being said it did meet my expectations of being not as good as her previous books. I don't know if my style like my reading styles have changed in like what I like to read or if it's her writing style that has changed. I don't really remember what her writing style was like back then. I just knew that I liked her books. I have like six or seven or eight of her books and for a couple of them, Keep Holding On, All I Need, and this one, I haven't liked them as much as I wanted to. The first book I ever read by her was Waiting For You and I really, really loved that one. Even though I don't remember what it was about, I remember loving it. I also really liked a couple of her other books, but this one and the past couple that I've read by her just haven't met the bar. I just felt like this book was lacking something. And if I didn't have to read a book that I DNF'd for my TBR jar pick, I would have DNF'd this book again and I wouldn't have picked it back up. That being said, I did have to read a book that I DNF'd for my TBR jar pick and that's why I stuck with this one. Originally I was going to read Harry Potter, but Harry Potter number six is quite the lengthy book and I didn't have the time to read a near 700 page book in like 10 days because that wouldn't have happened I just I know it wouldn't have so I picked something smaller originally I was going to read the book of Ivy but then I picked this one because I knew I DNF this in September and I was like you know what I'm gonna pick it back up and give it a shot a lot of the time it was really cheesy and really predictable it almost sounded like a Justin Bieber fan fiction if I'm honest at times where like it was her and Ethan it just like I I I will admit I used to read Justin Bieber fan fiction when I was like a big believer I I went through that phase okay I am not ashamed to admit I went through a Justin Bieber phase and now with One Direction I'm like oh my god I'm heartbroken but that's another video in itself it really reminds me of a Justin Bieber fan fiction the writing was just really lacking it felt like it was written for a middle school grade type book I, I don't know why it just feels like it wasn't a YA even though the characters were like 18 like she was 17 and he was 18 and it just felt like she was writing to a 13 year old like 13 year old me probably would have loved this because she was into Justin Bieber and she loved Suzanne Colasanti's books but 18 year old me is not feeling it there is insta love that's all I have to say. I'm one of those people who really loves the slow build into a romance and seeing them come together, learning to be friends before they become a couple. And like with this, they're already dating, but they've only been dating for a month and it's like, we haven't said I love you to each other, but it's definitely there. It felt really, really like forced, the love. And that's how I felt with All I Need too. They knew each other for one night and then they were obsessed with each other. And then they were like mad in love with each other as soon as they saw each other for like the second time. And I was like, no, no insta love, bad insta love, don't happen. There were a lot of obscure references to like Flight of the Concords and like videos that I had never seen or heard of and I think she just assumed that her readers would know what the references were and like maybe she was writing those references in for somebody to go and google them and understand them but I am one that I don't want to have to go and google something 
while I'm reading. Explain it to me. Like, she explains some of the, the videos, but like, they're just cheesy videos. And I've like, I've heard of them or seen them or like, haven't heard of them. And I just, I didn't like the obscure referencing. I wish she would have used references that were like, like Doctor Who or something. And maybe that's just because I didn't understand any of them. If somebody watches Flight of the Concords, if it's even a show, I don't even know what it is. But if anybody knows what it is, then they would get that reference. But I didn't. I think she should have just thought about the references she was putting in there. Like maybe she got them and maybe some of her fans that read her book got them. But I, for one, did not. And I'm sure a lot of people didn't get them. Main character Sterling has a typo obsession. Every time she sees a typo on a sign, she feels the need to go and correct it. She has a sharpie in her bag that if somebody will not go and correct the sign themselves, she takes matters into her own hands and goes and edits them. That is like obsessive. I like, I, I for one am like a big stickler on typos and signs and I notice them, but I don't point them out to people unless it's like a, a sign that needs to be changed for them to understand the sign. This is where it gets me. The line in the book where she explains it is, it all started with a vegetable. And then she explains how she went into a new grocery store and the sign said drinks, deli, blah blah blah, vegetable instead of vegetables. There was a missing S and she freaked over it. Why? I get that she doesn't like typos and signs because I'm a stickler for it too but I'm not one to take a sharpie to a sign and say fix it or I'll fix it for you. The thing is it explains that Sterling wants to be an editor in the book, yet most of the book doesn't revolve around her need to fix the signs. Like, like it mentions it a couple of times. It focuses more on the fact that she wants to have cooking related videos, kind of like a Cook with April channel. If you guys have watched April Athena 7 or her daily vlogs with April Justin TV, she has a Cooking with April channel and she does the recipes on there and teaches you how to cook these things. She wants to have a channel like that. And Ethan was posting videos on his YouTube and that's how he got started. If she, like, it talked more about her baking and her love for baking and all of her utensils in her kitchen and how she wants to make those videos. And I'm like, if you're so obsessed with cooking, why do you want to be an editor? And she wants to be an editor, not an editor, she wants to be a publisher. But if she, like, I don't understand why she would want to be a publisher when she has this need to correct all of the issues in signs. Wouldn't that be an editor's job? Sterling is a mush ball. And by that, I mean that every little thing that Ethan says, or Ethan does, or Ethan breathes, she melts. I melted into the floor. I melted into the bookcase. I melted into the into the the wall or I melted into this and I melted into that. By like hold on. I have all these book pages, right? I know that these two pink ones down here that you can barely see are about her melting. So in this page, she's melting into her chair. She melts into a wall. She melts into a door. She melts into the floor a lot. And then uh, that was page 93. By page 132, I said, I'm surprised she's not a puddle by now. See? I said that. I'm going to go through this book, and I'm literally going to count how many times she melted. She should be a puddle. She's a puddle. There are so many other ways you could have said that she melted. Like, you could have said she swooned, or she fangirled, or something like that. But you don't have to say melted, period into the floor period I, i'm going to talk about a specific part in here it's like three quarters of the way through the book and um sterling was talking to ethan and he asked if she had seen the fan video for his song night on fire and she was watching some pretty blonde girl sing his song to him about seducing and stuff like that and then she was like what i need is an attitude adjustment i can let the fear of losing ethan throw me into a panic desperation will only make me less attractive to him I have to calm down, be confident, remember how much he loves me, and hope that he remembers too. I'd like to know, at what point in a stable relationship does one have to think, I hope my boyfriend remembers to love me? I, I, I have no words for that. 
This book is 258 pages long and it took her 232 pages to realize that Ethan has changed because of the fame he's got, that he is not putting his effort into their relationship and that there are fans out there that are saying, oh, Ethan, be mine, be mine, and he's just soaking it in and he's not caring about how Sterling is feeling in this relationship. It's always about him. It's never about them. It's never about her. And it takes her 232 pages to realize that. I would realize on day one when somebody's not treating me right. I wouldn't make excuses for him like she did. I would not let somebody treat me like that and I don't think anybody else would or I would hope that they wouldn't. I would think that they'd have a little more respect for themselves than that and realize that they deserve better than to be treated like dirt. There is another main male character who doesn't come in until like the better part of half of the book I believe and his name is Damien. If you haven't read this book, this is a spoiler alert for the people who actually want to read this book and don't want spoilers, but if you don't care about spoilers, then just keep watching. This main male character, Damien, she talks to him over the phone and through text and everything more than she talks to Ethan because Ethan doesn't take the time to call her and text her while he's on tour after he gets big and famous. It takes her 238 pages to realize that Ethan has cheated on her with a fan and she, the first person she tells is Damien and Damien already knows this that Ethan has cheated because he's the roadie on Ethan's tour. I understand that Sterling is mad at Ethan because he cheated but part of me feels like maybe she was kind of growing emotionally attached to Damien too because Ethan wasn't treating her right and Part of me feels like she was kind of emotionally cheating on Ethan with Damien because she was falling in love or falling for this other guy while she was still with Ethan. Even though Ethan was treating her like crap, she was still with him, still girlfriend, and he was still boyfriend, and yet she was still talking to this other guy. And yes, you could say, oh, he's a friend, but you could tell that she felt emotionally co connected to Damien, like she almost felt with Ethan. The spoiler warning is over. No more spoilers. Overall, I was just really glad that I got to the end of this book because I knew that I was completing my TBR drug goal and I was like able to get on to another book and I don't know, I just felt really, really like torn because I used to really like her writing and now it's like the past couple of books I've read by her I haven't liked as much and maybe it's just because I'm maturing in what I like to read. I'm reading more new adult and I'm reading more YA but like it's closer to new adult if that makes sense and this seems like it's targeted more to the preteen age and middle age, middle grade age. I don't know. Like I said I only finished this book because I had to. Um, I'm not sure that I'm going to pick up any of her books in the future. I'd have to actually go and see in a bookstore if her writing is still the same as these because if it's the same as this, I don't think I'm going to like any of her future books. Like this is probably her newest one I believe and I didn't really like it. I gave this book two stars. That was generous because I had so many things to say about this book. I'm surprised I'm still giving it two stars. So if you have read this book, comment down below what you thought, if maybe it's just me about her writing, or if there is something you notice about her writing that is kind of similar to what I said about it. By all means, if you do want to read this book, all of our tastes are different. It, just because I didn't like this book doesn't mean you're not going to like this book. It's all about our taste and what we like and how we like the writing to be. And my opinion on this book might be very different from yours. So just because I've given this a semi pretty much negative review, it doesn't mean that I'm saying don't read this book at all because Maybe you'll like it, even though I didn't. So that is it for this review, you guys.